How are you this morning? Are you nice and chill? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about, I'm like, do we find value in things that help us relax? You know, when we're, when so many of us are doers, we associate value to doing something. And yesterday was really about undoing. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it doesn't, it really doesn't feed our anxiety at all. It, it helps get out of it. Yeah, and can we really discern the difference? Because when we go on vacation for rest, we're always doing something, aren't we? So, so how do we know what rest, relaxing really feels like if we associate it to? You get sick. That's your that's your perspective. <laughs> but to lay down. And then I was like, well, a lot of us don't find value in something that helps us relax. Like we go on a retreat to, to relax and unwind, but we're getting massages or we're going shopping. I, I find shopping very restorative, especially when it comes to jewelry or shoes. So, huh? Yeah. And even if we go somewhere and you go hiking, you're still doing something. Well, then you go and you sit by the fire pit and that's relaxing. And you or drink? Hours, not necessarily. Not necessarily? Mm hmm Yeah. So it's a little water sign. Do you have any fire in your chart? Um, yeah, I have a little fire and some, I don't have any air. I have one air. Oh, is that okay? Yeah. I know you're all water. <sighs> Good morning, everybody. Yesterday, for those of you who are just joining us, we did myofascial release all day and breathing techniques. And uh, it was really a, a more restorative day. And in the past, when I taught it, I tried to make it more educational with slightly more anatomical alignment and body scanning. And yesterday was just more about not doing any of that. How do you get out of your head and really back into your body? And one of the things that um, Lisa is saying with me right now, it's great because we can have all these meaningful conversations that are for me thought provoking. And one of them was really being able to discern the sensations of the physical body. And it comes to feelings, not emotional feelings like sad, mad, you know, that's inner child work. And that's important to the physical body, but it still also has its own way of being in communication with us. So a lot of times, you know, if you go to the doctor, they'll say, you know, rate your pain from one to 10. But in the practice of yoga, we're not looking to rate the pain as much as connect with, okay, what, what is the, the sensation of it? And when we can discern what the sensation is, we can start to adjust appropriately. Come on in, sweetheart. I think the door is locked. Good morning. Um, so part of meditation is getting back into that part of ourselves, the parasympathetic nervous system, where the diet, you're having a dialogue with the physical body and really becoming a good listener. And this is how we'll start to discern if we're dehydrated, if we're not breathing, if we're not getting enough rest because we're starting to take away those synthetic things that um, we would normally need, to, normally need to override it, like coffee. How many of you get a second cup of coffee or a third cup of coffee or have a pot of coffee? And we, if we're honest with ourselves, we're really using it to keep our energy going when really in the body is like, quit, quit already. So with that said, the second half of the day, we're doing joint freeing, we're rolling out. It's good to see you. Uh, and we're just going into that zenful place. And I consider this to be like a reboot. Because once you get there, you start to look at your, look at those things that have been driving you. And I'm like, well, does that really deserve all of my energy? Does that need to be a priority? What would I like to do differently? Um, so let's close our eyes and draw our attention inward. 
And if you don't normally meditate, feel free to lean up against the wall because the idea is not to get the body to start um, expressing itself through discomfort, but into relaxation. And we want to support that. And as you bring your attention inward, without making any changes, just observe your breath. And as we start to tune in, your senses may start to become heightened. We'll create a brand new grounding cord in present time. It goes from the base of the spine down to the center of the planet. In our imagination, this grounding cord can be anything. It can be a fire hose, a tree trunk, something you feel like supports you. It connects to the center of the planet. The roots are deep. It is meant to feed your soul. The earth energy, this vibration that the earth holds comes through the feet, the ankles, the calves, the thighs. It spins the first chakra. Bringing your awareness of the world into present time. And that this earth energy sort of till the first chakra. This represents your home, your work, your family, your body. Relax your belly so that you can open up that first chakra even more. We bring our awareness to the top of the head. This is our crown. And this has a relationship with our ancestors, God, angels, sages. 
as the first chakra works with the physical world, the seventh chakra works with the spiritual world. So we open that up and then allow Father's guide to come into the top of the head and bend that seventh chakra. It goes down either side of the spinal column. You want to clear the energy of the shishimna. These are two energy channels on either side of the spine. Um, since we've been talking about fascia this weekend, we want it to clear the energy that may be jammed up in the fascia. And as Tom Myers spoke to yesterday, if we don't breathe into the rib cage, it cannot support the shoulders or the neck. The crown chakra works with the element of air or ether. So breathing deeply supports that experience. Any excess energy goes down the grounding cord. Continuing our journey we started yesterday of releasing unnecessary physical, mental, and spiritual tension. Does stillness bring up anxiety for you? the first chakra and the seventh chakra as equal to each other.
as that cosmic energy comes down the spinal column, allow it to drill a little hole into the first, the first chakra that's at the base of the spine. And as that creates this little hole, let all that energy pour down the grounding cord. Draining out the old ways of being. Making room for new ways of being. We hold on to a lot of old judgments within the first chakra that cloud our current judgment. If we can see ourselves with fresh eyes, we can see others with fresh eyes as well. People can change, they change all the time. Can we change our perspective? Are you still operating for a paradigm where you're seeking someone's approval? Give yourself permission. Reminding ourselves that we have enough, we do enough, and that we are enough. Placing any bias we hold in the first chakra to love.
Set your first chakra that I am enough.
Bringing your awareness back to your physical body. We'll stretch it towards the sky and come out of trance. 